Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your faithfulness, for staying on until the very end, almost. Uh, I will speak in English because um, I have prepared it in English. Uh, I hope there is still translation going for those of you who may need it. I am going to talk to you about the importance of values and cultural narratives for the European integration, unity and well-being, and I'm going to speak to you from the perspective of an educator. Values appear to play a key role in the lives of individuals and societies. Sociology and political sciences have recently come to a greater appreciation of the role values play in the European integration process itself. Similarities and common traits in foundational values are conducive to greater trust between people. Higher levels of trust encourage greater cooperation and economic integration. In order to promote a certain measure of value convergence, however, the notion of culture as the breeding ground of values should be interpreted according to a more complex anthropological meaning and not a narrow idealistic vision that reduces cultural value to an aesthetic dimension viewed merely for entertainment and not for increasing human capital through the knowledge of history. Uh, it appears that the European Union founders and uh, policymakers realized the importance of values for building our common European house. And so this is one example of what uh, the European Union believes are the foundational values and freedoms. Here is another example. Freedom, rule of law, democracy, equality, respect for human rights. Uh, so this issue is being discussed. However, when you, when you look at the slide, notice that people might argue that something's missing there. For example, there is a, nobody mentions the truth and derived values from truth, like honesty and justice. Now, we have roof, rule of law, but that's not the same as truth or search for truth or piety or several other things. So it's highly debatable whether these foundational values are enough. The recent European value study came to us as a wake-up call, after all, warning us that Europe is not as homo homogeneous environment as was previously expected. European unity seems to be a unity of diversity. There appear important differences between Europe's societies that have to do with different levels of economic development, but also with varieties in cultural heritages, languages, religious and ideological traditions and differences in political and educational systems. The dynamics of values change cannot be summarized in a single and straightforward way by referring to a single theory of change. Value orientations appear dependent upon specific national contexts and a nation's historical development. So we seem to be facing a real challenge here, trying to look for ways how to put the broken pieces together. And it's not an easy task. And we're not dealing with just uh, you know, those obvious issues, such as uh, a refugee crisis and the different responses that we get from different European nations. There are some more fundamental issues at stake. For example, the level of understanding of democracy, democracy as, as a value. Notice the uh, results of this survey that was done in 2008 uh, regarding the popularity of uh, Putin, the president, and his authoritarian system. 
the percentage of people that think having a strong leader who does not have to bother with parliament and elections would be a fairly, uh, and that this would be a fairly good idea. But notice, notice the countries in the Balkan area, but also Portugal, Ireland, those are societies in Europe that believe that you know, Putin's way of rule might actually be quite good and attractive. Now, the same people also thought that having a democratic political system would be actually a fairly good idea. So there are some contradictions there, uh, as you can see on the map. There are some other questions, important questions for people. For example, the question of the importance of God or you know, transcendent being for one's life. You can see that we have differences within Europe uh, that are quite striking, even if we don't think of Turkey as part of, of, of Europe as much. Uh, but notice Poland, Romania, and other countries where this issue is quite important. And then we have this. We have the issue of uh, modern technology and what it does to people, to how they perceive their personal identity and their culture. Our modern technology has been able not only to expedite our experience of life, but also to overcome seemingly all distances. Paradoxically, however, it has failed to create an authentic nearness, human mutuality and empathy. We, the educators, may know what is taking place in the most remote places in Australia, but we often fail to notice what is going on in the soul of the child next to us. Disconnected individuals are unable to socialize in meaningful, long-lasting, and deeply satisfying ways. And my friends, these people then become an easy prey for manipulators, extremists, and terrorists. And I noticed that few people actually analyze the roots of the comp contemporary crisis on this level, and I think it's a major mistake. So next, Europe. How do we build our common European home if we continue to be divided on key issues of safety and immigration? politics and the value of democracy, religion and its place in society, issues of values and personal and cultural identities. How do we do this? The only way out seems to be to intentionally examine and critically embrace the constitutive elements of our cultural civilizational narrative. So instead of only asking, what does each country want for itself and how do we strike a compromise deal? We should rather ask, what is the constitutive cultural narrative of the European civilization? And how do our national narratives derive their vision of life and ethos from this unifying narrative? It's a big task and we'll need a lot of help. But I am I'm, I'm convinced that education will be a major part of the solution. I'm convinced that education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. I'm also convinced that educators, whether secular or religious, should strive to project such a vision of life and articulate such questions concerning life's meaning that will prevent young people from being caught in the trap of consumerism, meaningless hedonism, or dangerous ideologies. But somebody needs to work with them. It won't go automatically. We need a holistic education which will foster and integrate the necessary knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes into a positive vision of life towards a sustainable future. It is a complex and expensive adventure, to be sure, yet the only thing more expensive than education, my friends, is ignorance. The only thing more expensive 
than education is ignorance. In this adventure, modern technology will surely be our help and useful partner, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, well, we should not, in fact, we must not let technology overshadow other aspects of the learning process. As Aristotle would say, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. More recently, Martin Luther King put it in these words. The function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character. That is the goal of true education. Or as C.S. Lewis suggested even more urgently, and I personally subscribe to this, and I see it all around me actually, education without values, as useful as it is, seems rather to make man a more clever devil, a more clever, what, person who knows how to steal money, for example or how to get ahead at the expense of others. That's not what we need, and that's not how we can build future Europe. When we speak of upbringing and education in general, we should not neglect the richness and potential of human sciences for helping people mature cognitively, relationally, emotionally, and ethically. A deliberate cultivation of values and virtues in humans should be recognized as a key goal of all types of education, not just of the programs that are in the humanities. It seems to me that more could be done in this. Current emphasis on technical sciences, professional training, and dual education with the more immediate aim of securing enough qualified workers for industry is a legitimate and understandable goal. It is legitimate, and I'm glad this is happening. What remains neglected, however, is a wider perspective, the issue of interdependence and interconnectedness of things from the perspectives of humanities. And these are my key theses that I would like to propose to you today. A pro-social, philanthropic, environmentally conscious human character must be intentionally cultivated it won't come as a result of happy coincidences. All fields of study, all fields of study, including life sciences, natural sciences, economy, need to be more intentionally interwoven with some fundamental themes from the humanities. I am not advocating for educating more experts in the field of humanities. I don't think that's what we need. I am rather advocating for future experts in all fields of knowledge to have a robust formation in culture and values as part of their training. We may call it liberal arts basic or humanities foundation, which would include a variety of hands-on experiences actually in voluntary service, in charities, for example, hospitals and so on, because you don't nurture and cultivate virtues in human beings without them actually going and doing the things you talk about. So they need to have an opportunity to go and try it out. Let me switch to the conclusion now. So what kind of values are we talking about and who is to tell? Here is an example. That's Martin Schulz in 2015. He identified the soul of Europe as consisting of the values of solidarity, respect, and tolerance. But I think this is not enough, and I think there is a confusion in identifying and agreeing upon our core values. And it reveals the urgency of the following question. What is the cultural, civilizational heritage our European home stable and secure. We need to grow in, ap in appreciation of the common heritage and those values that exert a constitutive, integrative function culturally, socially, and politically across the European environment. A thorough understanding of the key economic and political forces and institutional procedures within the EU will not help 
It is not an inconclusive indicator as far as the future of the EU is concerned. What we lack is a clear articulation and an honest, courageous tackling of this question. What is the European soul? Contemporary Europe seems to be teetering on the brink of not just a socio-economic and political breakdown, but also a serious cultural and religious instability. Our endeavors in educating future generations of European citizens should thus be intentionally aiming at promoting a wider cultural and religious understanding, including intercultural and interreligious competencies, remembering that both cultural and religious narratives are exceptionally potent motivation factors in the lives of individuals and communities. I believe that the next Europe project means to articulate these questions, among others. It wants to bring to our attention the necessity to think intentionally about the kind of foundations we want to build future Europe on. In my contribution, I have argued that the question of next Europe's foundations inevitably includes a reflection on its constitutive cultural narrative. Human societies need the so-called meta-narratives, for these have a constitutive function for moral, moral deliberation and action. If moral philosophy, as well as political science, abandons its teleological structure provided by a constitutive narrative, it becomes nothing but a form of inexplicably subjective rules and principles, as Alasdair McIntyre points out, resulting in a nihilistic chaos. Hence, the need for a solid, competent reflections on Europe's cultural narrative. Ensuing from this reflection will be an ethical discourse focused on how to cultivate inner values in humans and what role does and should education play in this important task. Europe has a common future if we succeed in answering these questions well. Thank you for listening to me to the very end.